So in this lesson we're going to start building a gobo tool and this is where we're going to start getting quite into our arrays and our control systems um, so that we can set uh, information inside the editor as well as uh, drawing out of DMX. So jump back into the editor again and we're going to create a whole new a whole new section here um, to create the gobo variables. The first thing we need to do is go back into designer and create a little UI for it. There's a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, I tried a couple of ways and they both work but one's more work than the other. So there's the way that we're not going to do, I'm just going to show you, if you go into your input you've got a thing called a combo box. Uh, you've got a key version and a string version. Uh, if I drag this down you can see what happens is we create a little box that has a drop down and you can add the drop downs. Where are we? content is in there somewhere. Oh yeah, default options, array elements. So we'll add an element, we'll create a few, we'll call it um, test1, uh, call it gobo2 and color3 for instance. Oh, spelt it the American way, you know. Um, and we're going to default to test1 as the selected option. That is now a collection of objects which can be called in the blueprint. So if I compile this and save, if we load our project, oh, lights just defaulted, um, I now have a drop down here with test one, go by two, color three. Yep, so that's uh, a tool that we can use to um, just choose our UI. I don't want that mechanism at the moment. Maybe later we can have a look at that as, a, as another way of doing it. I'm gonna use um, the, where is it, spin box. The spin box gives you a number. Uh, it's a float number, so it has got a decimal place in it. Um, we can change that later to get rid of a decimal. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and we're going to drag this across. And the reason we're using this is that I want to get a number out of the system, not a string. Uh, we need a number to control the gobo uh, variable. So I'm going to just create this and call it gobo selector. And we need a minimum and a maximum value. Now we've got, I think, 15 gobos in this light, so I'm going to put in 15. Oh, got to stop using that keyboard. 15. I think you all probably have comments on that in the, uh, in the video. So that needs to be zero. Values at zero because we're starting at zero. The minimum value is zero. And then the minimum and maximum slider value is the same, zero and 15. Um, so the value is the value that actually comes out of the, uh, the tool and then the slider value is how far the slider actually travels. So you can have two different numbers, number that you, you're calling, number you're seeing, and the number that's actually being produced. Um, and then down here we've got the on value changed command again. Now there's two here, that's, there's a new one, there's this on value committed which is quite a nice one. You could drag something across, it's not until you hit enter and commit the number that it will generate an event. Um, but we're going to use on value change for this one, just like we did for the sliders. So it works the same way. It produces exactly the same information, but it just looks different on the screen. So you can see the number as you're, as you're spinning it. We do the same thing. We're going to create a variable. It's currently called in value. We're going to call it there, there for variable, um, gobo, uh, what should we call it? Uh, spin, because it's a spin box. Actually, that's a bit risky, isn't it? Because you could have a spinning gobo. So let's not call it gobo spin. We're just going to call it gobo. Because that, that would suggest that you created the spinning gobo effect. Right, and then we're going to come over to a new area. We're going to create something else. In fact, we could build it on this. So, in fact, no, I've made a mistake. We don't need the variable here. The variable goes at the end. We need to create the gobo first. This is just giving us the slider information. So let's just break that apart. We'll keep it because we need it in a second. Um, we are going to create a uh, an array. We need a gobo array. So we need another variable which is going to be our, uh, our gobos. Now I showed you this in the last uh, last lesson how arrays work. I'm going to call this one variable gobo array. And rather than it being an integer, we are going to create an actual array with, um, oh no, no, it's an integer array because each 
each time we move the spin box, it's going to generate a number, and we're going to call that out, and that's going to tell the gobo uh, to move. So the integer is um, is set. We're going to exp no, we're not going to expose it. We don't need to expose it. Uh, we're just going to drag it into our project and do a get like this. Okay. Uh, we need to compile so we can add elements here, and there are 15 gobos, so we're going to create 15 elements. So it's actually, yeah, 15 elements. And if you go back to our manual, we'll see that the gobo, where is it, down here. So you've got, you've got an extra one, we've got 16 actually, we've got the blackout as well. So we need one more. We've got open, June, sunburst. Uh, that's not important, we don't need the names. We could put the names later on into the, um, into the UI as a way, you know, we can print the string based on the number that we generate. Uh, what we're interested in is uh, not the percent, but the value. So when the DMX value for this attribute, 4, is at 12, it will load Gobo 2. Uh, so we need to put all these numbers in. So let's just, I'm going to drag this out of the screen because I, I don't think you're going to be able to see me and it at the same time. So I will start off, let's add another one because we've got 16 it said. So you have to bear with me. So the first one is 12. The next one is 24, 36, 48, see where this is going, it's going up in 12s, 60, 72, so 12 times table let me down now, 84, 96, uh, 180. So now what that's saying is that when each of these numbers is called by the spin box, <coughs> so if you've got a number of 15, the value of 15, it will send a byte rate of 180 in that DMX channel, which the light will interpret to push to the 15th gobo. So that's the gobo array. Um, I'm going to compile and save that. That's now there, that's now in that gobo array, that's there forever. Don't have to touch it anymore, we don't have to write that in anywhere else. We now need to call this. So we're going to do a get, get a copy, so it's going to break that down. We're going to get each element based on a number. What number is that going to be? Well that number is going to be based on the spin box. So we are, oh sorry, no, we're going to drag the value to here, it's going to convert it into an integer. That uh, means that if we set the spin box to 2, it is going to get our second index here, which is 24. It's going to send then 24 bytes of data to this variable, which needs to go to the DMX. Now you see the colors are very slightly different greens. I built this as a, uh, a float. Actually, it needs to be an integer because that's what we've created here. What will go into the you know, system here, you see that green is the same green as an integer, and it says integer there. So all these floats have been converted anyway. Now I could leave it and it convert it, but we might as well make it correct in the first place. Um, there needs to be a conversion at some point. The conversion is happening here. All of these ones, uh, the conversion is happening at the other end. So we're going to change it to an integer. It's going to ask me, do I really want to do that? Yes, change a variable type. There we go. It's now an integer. And we're going to connect that up so that it's going to change the value every time we move the slider. Let's push it into there, we set it, and now we need to get it. So we're going to get our variable gobo, remember it's different from the array, the array is collecting all the values of the, of the gobo, this is collecting the position of the gobo. So we put this into the gobo command, there we go. Compile and save, let's see if that works, let's go into play mode, let's Lift the intensity, and we're going to spin it round, push it up, there. Can that spin this box? What happens? Look, all our gobos are changing. Let me put you into the large view again so you can you can see what's happening. Uh, I'll lift it up onto the, onto the curtain there. So if I spin this spin box, you can see it's changing the gobo. Now what I need to do ideally, if I just come back to the uh, the view here, um, 
we're using these really weird float numbers so it's it's not really ideal you're kind of struggling to to see the um uh you're struggling to see the the actual number that we're putting in so i have to stop this and start again because i clicked inside the the editor and i've lost it so i'm going to put this just on this lighting desk here it'll be easy enough to see oh, yeah. no, i won't go that far so what I can do is just type in to the, into here the number. So I type in one, enter, and it will spin to the first gobo, um, spin to four, enter, and it'll spin to the fourth one. So that's that's a, an inefficient way of doing it. Now, earlier I was showing you the method of using the, the drop down boxes to select um, numbers. Now you, you could build that into an array and the name that you chose could trigger the right gobo. You could also use it to control this value. So you could hide this spin box somewhere else. Um, and we could use a checkbox to set the value to one, two, three, four. So there's different ways of doing it. Um, we could also set this up so that it prints the name of the text. So if it's Gobo 5, we could type in what is it, June or something, that it prints it next to it. So you know that when you type in one, two, three, four, five, it would give you um, the name of the Gobo as well. So. Uh, we don't do that now, but it's something we might do later when we tidy up the UI. Okay, right, on to the next lesson.